Welcome back. We are looking forward to begin a brand new Igeris. A letter, a presentation, an epistle of the Alter Rebbe. We spoke about this many times, the distinction of this segment, which is the fourth segment of the Alter Rebbe's Tanya, over the previous three. For that matter, the fifth is similar, has a similarity. Not exactly the same, but definitely distinct from the first three segments. Uh, we know in Tanya there's the five segments, as in other places. This is the Teresh Sav of Teresh Achsidus, thus the five segments. We spoke about it in the past, but the distinction of the Vigeris HaKadosh and ultimately Kuntrasach in the fifth of the first three segments, there it's a particular message. Each one is the Alter Rebbe. For example, Kuti Amorim, the Alter Rebbe describes its message in the first, uh, in the Sharblat, in the entry, in the gateway into Tanya. What the message of the Kuti Amorim is, so, in the end of the day, you come out with one important message, of course, the Sevish Benini, the description of the Benini, and the, uh, the unique role of the Benini, which is the average, as the al explains there, uh, we mentioned many times, in Lukut Yamarim is the perfect manual to Abayda Hashem, but again, the al describes it in the very beginning of the... Tanya, in other words, in the in the, in the, in the Shar Blat, the way it's called, the gateway into Tanya, the 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 uh, what the, the Kuti Amarim is all about. So, you know, the, 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 even though there's so many different important ideas which come across in this Sefer Kuti Amarim, there's 53 chapters, but nonetheless, of course, it's all sequential, chapter after chapter after chapter. And so, to the Shar Chidamuna, the Alteb is inimitable presentation. Of Ash, the message of Achdus Hashem, the unity of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, the oneness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, is to, we, we we mentioned this so many times, especially when we're learning Shaykh Lamona. We say every day Shvai Yisrael Hashem Malikin Hashem Echad. Wouldn't we want to have the maximum appreciation of this very message? And to do so, we really ought to learn Shaykh Lamona of the Alter Rebbe. <laughs> so it's a uh, it's it's a game changer, of course. We spoke about many times, especially when we learned that we navigated through the the, uh, the entire Shari Yichav It's a different appreciation of the oneness of Akash Baruch Hu. This is his message. So each chapter is a con- is connected to the previous chapter. It's a sequence. Um, and so to El Gersa Tshuva, Al Tereb's presentation of the mitzvah, the mitzvah of Tshuva, this unique mitzvah. Mm. By all means, this is a fundamental mitzvah. So the Alter Rebbe has the 12 chapters, which each one is a continuation of the other. The Geres HaKadosh is distinct, it's different. It's letters written in different times, different circumstances, even though we did say that you can definitely you know, find a certain um, messages which are underscored throughout. In other words, you want to you know, thread throughout all the Geres HaKadosh. We spoke about the Alter Rebbe's inimitable uh, appreciation and presentation an explanation, an elaboration of the mitzvah of Tzdoko, which is really a game changer in this whole expo- in the whole appreciation of this mitzvah. But there are certain Nigeras which even the mitzvah of Tzdoko is not mentioned. The Rebbe underscores the Midat and and um, and again through the the the, the not only explaining it as as. Uh, as a presentation and a explanation of a particular mitzvah, of course, through the lens of Teres Achsidus, which this is what the Alter Rebbe was all about. Of course, a Pesach in Nigla, the Teda, the Rav but ultimately the Pesach in Nista, the Teda, and the Alter Rebbe's Chidush, his novelty, innovation, which he brought to the world. And all these Igeris are interwoven with the Alter Rebbe, with the Alter Rebbe's explanations of Teda in Teres Achsidus, or based on the Alter Rebbe's explanation of Teda, of, uh, of the the Tedus Achsidus, which the Alter Rebbe brought to the world, you know, he, 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 uh, brings this mitzvah, which the Alter Rebbe is explaining and pre- and uh, elaborating on in that particular Igeris le- uh, letter presentation with a total different light. And uh, it's really capturing, of course, when the Alter Rebbe explains it through the lens of Tedus Achsidus, like Teisach says in general, is a, is a captivating limud. <coughs> Perhaps I would even say like no other limud. And therefore, you know, the mitzvah tzedakah, the lens of Teisach Sidus, it's a unique way of presenting this mitzvah, it's a different mitzvah tzedakah. 
the Tera, Tefillah, and so on. So it's a different, in other words, a, a Pedic Zion, we, we, it's not, it's not, we don't call it Pedic Zion, it's a Geras Zion, a Geras HaKreda Zion, it's the seventh uh, epistle of the Alter Rebbe, it's a separate idea, and then again, like all the Geras HaKreda, it was written in separate times, even though its message, of course, is ultimately timeless, and there for uh, posterity, for eternity, it's the Alter Rebbe's Tera, whatever the Alter Rebbe penned, or Nigla and Echsidis is there for all times. That's Seif Kolodeidis. Carries the weight of Teira. But it's unique. Geras HaKedish is distinct and, and, and different. Um, we did mention it a few times. So it's not Pedic Zion. It's Geras HaKedish Zion. It's a separate letter. It's not directly connected to the previous Vav or, or He and so on. And not to the next. Every letter is separate. Um, it's a separate letter, a separate message. We do note, even though it's more relevant, of course, when we learn the first three segments, to appreciate that Patek, uh, the Patek which would, would begin to appreciate the message of the previous chapter, which this, the present chapter would be a continuation of. It's important to go back to the previous chapter, especially the newcomers, um, and to appreciate the altar of his message in the previous few chapters, and namely the one leads up to that present chapter. So we mentioned it time and again. Wherever you're watching it, it's always you always have the advantage of the original website tanyaonline.com, which all the previous classes are set up, are lined up. That is on the left side, easy to access. Also, the text come up, comes up on a separate scroll, mm, uh, a separate scroll bar. So there, it's easy also to follow. Um, however, here it's a brand new idea, but nonetheless, you want to see in general what uh, what uh, the, the previous chapters deal with, or previous Igeras letters deal with. Again, it's a click away, even though, again, when it comes to the Igeras HaKedr, it is distinct. And it's a new Igeras, a brand new idea, and it has its own unique message. We do mention also that uh, it's worthwhile to know this uh, this uh, the website, because many times you have the cross-references, even though it's a new beginning with Al-Tarebbe himself, Cross references mm, from one Igeras to another, and namely many times to the Alter Rebbe's own work of uh, uh, the, uh, these first three segments. Something that the Alter Rebbe himself mm, refers the, the, uh, in, in the chapter to that message which he previously explained the length and elaboration. However, so many times we do. We explain a certain idea, and we just said you, know, you want to understand it more and appreciate it more to that to that that chapter. It's really a click away, easy to access, and really easy to appreciate. So we're going to start right. We're going to immediately, immediately, <laughs> we're going to begin the chapter Asheno, and I would just say this is a real loaded chapter. Its message is fundamental in our Beis Hashem. Yeah, it's it's very very. Uh, has a very significant message and the shlichus of the person of Adam is in this world, of course, has a choice by Kodesh Baruch to send the neshama down here and invest the neshama in a body and in an animal soul in order to do its aveda, to refine mm, his animal soul, his body, his lot in this world. And, and everyone, every yid has a particular shlichus which is usually guided from on high with Hashem's Hashkoch Pratis, Divine Providence, but, and, 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 you know, this one in the world of Teira, Yeshev El, this one in the world of more Askonos, Askonos Siburis, Balit Stoko, generally the thing, the, the way it's, there's the compartmentalization from, from the perspective in the lens of Teira. There's the Yeshev El, Balit Teira, and Balit Uvdin Tavin, which is, those who are more involved in Stoko, that's the way Yisachar and Zvulun were divided. So, many times we, 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 we um, you know, we, we doubt, no, we doubt, but nonetheless, we try to find clarity. What is our particular shlichus in this world? Which, is, of course, becomes very fundamental. This is what a yid lives with throughout when he establishes himself or herself in, 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 in the, uh, in the, in, in, in uh, as many, many times, you know, as we develop, especially in the way Yiddish guy demands that the person begins his life more, let's say, for the, for the man who is in a, con- a total immersion, there is the commonality between most of the people. They go to yeshiva and they learn Teda for many years in order to be able to establish themselves in their Abed Hashem throughout the entire lifetime. They need that anchor. They need that, mm, uh, that, that but it's an also. It's, it's, it's the mitzvah limit of course, given to men, but it, it works as well. If men and women, which you see that there's the 
the way it's set up, it's not just like that, that it's set up, there's a school system that a, 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 a Yid, which is born, and every Yid has his, his, his or her unique shlichus in this world, they have to invest, anchor themselves in the information, in the energy of Taita, in the information of Taita, and they do this for many long years, the, uh, the, the, the study, the absorption of the message of Taita, and then when they set their life up and they establish themselves, they have a particular trajectory. And again, there's certain people that say, you mean Yeshua El, and of course there's variations within Yeshua El, and there's variations in Bali, Uvdin Tavdin, Bali Tzdok, and so on. So the, there is, you know, this is something that becomes very centralistic in the persons, in the persons, in the Yid's um, establishment. And I'll tell you, you know, it has this important message in this chapter, which deals with the particular unique shlichus of every single year, and how it's so important, how it's so crucial. And for that matter, in every generation, the generate the variations based on the turn of the generation. For example, we can't compare the message and mandate, or the mandate of the uh, generation of the Tanaim and Amiraim to the mandate of generations which came later. And every generation, there's the Tzava Shah, this is which is demanded now, which is distinct and different, even though, of course, there's a common practice of Teda Mitzvahs, which would never change. He does always learn Teda and Shiurim and Teda and Davening and Mitzvahs and the same Mitzvahs and the same Tefillin and the same Matzah and the same Sukkah. That and doesn't ever change, and there's no amendment to that at all, of course. But there's the overall, every, every, every generation has its Shlichus. Right? If we can never, and, 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 and if that's what's demanded from the generation, this is what is, uh, this is what we have to follow, of course. But again, there's differences within that very shlichus of the generation, and the way it uh, spreads itself out to Am Yisrael, the way it's manifest in the shlichus of every single yid as an individual, which ultimately complements and ultimately compiles and ultimately is mashlim. It contributes and complements and contributes and ultimately completes uh, the implementation of Hashem's desire, ultimately the grand scheme of Hashem wanting a dir of a tachtein, the dwelling place in this physical world, that this physical world will ultimately one day be engulfed with the knowledge of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the reality of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, the reign of a Kodesh Baruch Hu, but every generation has that mandate to bring in, in a way, particular, particularly unique style how to implement this grand plan of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So as such, of course, when one is born into a generation, they have to know what their shlichus is and what the demand of the the dair of that epoch which they were born into. And there, then, again, the way it's divided, their particular role complementing the mandate of their generation and, of course, ultimately complementing the overall mandate of Lassus Leis Baruch Dirbetachtein, Hashem's ultimate goal and objective to transform this world, to become the voted domicile for him. So we begin again. This is a bit tedious, this chapter, I must say. It's distinct, a bit different, maybe the other than the even vis a vis the other Igeris of the Al Tereb, but we're going to, let Hashem, do our best to learn it together. Ashreinu Matev Chalkein Al Tereb begins with this, which we recite every single morning. And this is in all versions of all Sidurim. Ashreinu Matev Chalkein. How fortunate we are. Matev Chalkein, how good is our uh, part umanoim goyrolenu how sweet is our lot so of course we come to daven before we daven we say ah we're coming to shul a yid come, wakes up in the morning and comes to shul doesn't jump straight into fifth avenue and of course you know enters into the into the cheshech of elam haza into the confusions of elam haza a yid wakes up in the morning goes to shul and as he establishes that clarity through that time that he invests in davening, and then davening itself is the time that we can emote with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the ability to have that sensation dem- or uh, experience a sensational relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. and we can do this on a daily, on a daily basis, and we're meant to do it on a daily basis again, we spoke about the Vedas HaTfila many, many times in this class and we spoke about all of, all of our tailors, this is the spine core, the spine and, uh, of, the, of, the, of Yiddishkeit, the Vedas HaTfila that have explained it so beautifully but again, spoken about throughout, and in Sifri Musa, and in Sifri Chsidis, of course, the uniqueness of a Yid, giving, giving, given the ability, a Yid given the ability to be, be to relate to a Kodesh to be to ultimately to have the ultimate 
oneness, an intimate oneness with Hashem, which is the idea of davening, how fortunate we are. So before we start davening, we establish, oh, how fortunate we are. We come to shul, and we're, we're, we have the ability to relate with HaKadosh Baruch And how good is our part? How sweet is our lot? But yet we know that we just, in Yiddish God, there's no just multiple expressions just to, you know, bring, bring one idea home, that we're lucky, we're fortunate. No, of course, everything in Yiddishkeit <clears throat> is, is with maximum precision. So when we say, Matev Chalkeinu, our part, and Matev good, and then we say the terminology, how sweet, and we say this is a new idea, Goyro our lot. So we know that it's with, with, it's with precision. And so what is it, the Chalkeinu, our part, our portion, if you will, our portion? Or, and, and then Goyro would be our our lot, what is the difference of the portion of lot? So on the, on, the, on the surface, not only what is the difference, there's a stark difference because a portion could be shared by many. A lot is you, you gained it by lot, like you say a lottery. They won the lottery, so one person wins the lottery. I mean, it could be a few, but generally it's, it's, it's individualized. Or it's not individualized for the person, it's by lottery, but once they win the lottery retroactively, this is something which is related to them. They won the lottery. It's individual as opposed to a portion, which a portion could be shared by many. So what is it? So we must say again, it is. It comes across in the end. There is within that message something which is associated with the chelkenu, the portion, our portion, and then something very sweet about the girdle, our lot. There's a pasuk which has. Then it brings a few verses. This is what we say before diving out. it brings a few verses. Which also has these similar expressions. Hashem and Aschelki, you are the, um, you are my 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 portion. You are the allotment of my of my uh, of my um, of my portion, if you will. Which is again the uh, you have the same idea of a chelik over here. Then you could, in which of course David Melech speaking about the closeness of Hakadosh Baruch Hu to him. The kaisi or my cup, Hashem Noscha, the kaisi at the time, it is a big game. It says it, 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 uh, it, he doesn't, Alter Rebbe doesn't conclude the posse, but there also says the idea at the time, you support my lot. These are expre- similar expressions to this, which we say is an introduction to our formal prayer. It's also in the end of it, it's, it's part of the prayer, but it's an introduction to our, you know, the formal beginning of the prayer. Entering into prayer, the prior to that, we say how fortunate we are. We're able to say Shema Yisrael. You know, this leads to that Shema Yisrael before Davani, that uh, how lucky we are. We're able to, you, to, to appreciate and absorb and live with that message of Hashem Elekeinu Hashem Echad, the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Which, of course, once we know that, we appreciate that oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Davani is a different type of Davani, that oneness with HaKadosh Baruch Hu is a different oneness. And this is what we... You know, it, it demonstrate excitingly. Ashreino is so fortunate, and how great our portion is, and how sweet our lot is. And so, this following pasuk has similar terminology. Then it is another pasuk, Chavolim Nafli Banimi, that uh, the chords of tracts have fallen to me with sweetness, with pleasantness. The, the next word, Af Nachalas Shafra Loi, the inheritance. Have positively shof shofar is about goodness, and sweetness, and 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 uh, it's an expression of pleasure. Have befallen me and have connected to me in a very pleasant way. So the Alter Rebbe is show, pointing out before he starts explaining this Asherim Matuhin and points out that in in essence, it's part of the prayer. But we find these terminologies and verses of Tehillim. In the end of the day, it's in within Teda, with Teda divided, Teda Nevim Ksuvim. This is part of the Ksuvim, this is part of Tilim, this is Psuki Teda in the end of the day, which have these similar expressions. Chelki, Geroli, and so on. My portion, my lot. What is this supposed to mean? And again, of course, because it's part of Teda Sevnes and it's part of the Tfilah, which the Adzri Knesset Dele established, uh, the great tzaddikim of the great assembly established, of course everything was with maximum precision, so we have to understand what does it mean, chalkein v'gayr aleinu? The Rebbe begins, love and lashon chalkein v'gayr aleinu, to understand the expression of my lot, my portion, and my lot. 
the distinction between the two. What is this? What is the Chalkeinu um, meant to the message of Chalkeinu? What is the message of Geir Aleinu? The message of our portion and the message of our lot. So Tzadok, as we said also, there's a, there's a difference also. Chalkeinu could be, many, many could receive a portion by Geir is, you know, directly about the individual. This becomes relevant in the message of the Alter Rebbe. Right, picking up a little bit, we we we, we uh, threw a few of the, the, the the spirit of the chapter. There's something individual for the individual, their particular shlichus, a particular generation, an individual mm, it, within that generation. What is their mandate? What are they meant to do? Again, let's not jump the gun. So let's go on to Lavai Hete Lashon Hashagul Menazal. In order to understand this, well, let's, we have to understand thoroughly. This is which is usual and accustomed to be brought in as an expression in the sayings of our sages of blessed memory, so it's, a, it's something, of course, it's a negative expression that there's certain um, actions, certain um, pathways that a yid would take, unfortunately, that because of that, he doesn't have a part in the God of Israel. So it says a number of sins, not to mention them now. There are quite a few. That it says if one does that, he doesn't. Unfortunately, he he, he stoops to such a such a drops to such a low level to the extent that he doesn't have a part in the God of Israel, which is of course the most difficult and grave. Um, information or grave experience that one could ever experience is not having a part in the God of Israel. Everyone wants to be constantly connected to the God of Israel. To Avinu Shabbat to our Father in Heaven. I mentioned in different, in different times. And again, in, in the context of the Alter Rebbe brings the Gates of Shuvah, and other times, I mentioned, you know, for a child, what they want is they want the closeness of the parents. The rest is really, really, there's no comparison. We gave the example the other day. Baruch A child, let's say, in an amusement park, they have their eyes open. They want everything, whatever that comes to their eye. They want everything. They want this, and they want all the prizes, and they want the rides. Every single ride, they get their their eyes are, and every single everything catches their eye. We need. I have to go on this ride, now, and I have to have that. And they're all like, he's all like, he or she is all excited to spend the day and and to be uh, spoiled and treated by their parents. And they want everything in their mind. The moment they turn around and they don't see the parents who brought them to this amusement park as an example. But again, it's out in the street. There it's a, but sometimes you see it in the, that the kid is, it has, it has the, 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 is, is ambitious to connect to everything else. And everything else is not really relevant because I want everything and I, and, I, and I need everything. But the moment they turn around and they don't see their parents or if a child is going with his father or their mother together, together both of them are in with the parent and then they turn around they don't see them they're not interested in anything they just everything falls away and melts away and someone would come over to them don't worry about it we'll look after you till you find your parents you'll find them tomorrow let's say but today spend the day a free pass a free band go on every single ride and you get every uh, every keychain whatever is hanging out there and it's all yours Take it and calm down. The child will just, I'm not interested in anything. I'm just interested, and, and, and it's really, everything really melts away like it's not the moment before the kid wanted everything in front of their eyes, every single ride, every uh, tchotchke, if you will, would, in, which is, you know, catches the eye in the amuse, amusement park. Again, we just give one example, but it's not, of course limited to that, but it's something that you see that the child will, the moment they don't meet up their parents, all that becomes completely insignificant. And you see it also when they turn the corner and they do see their parent or whatever because they just missed each other or whatever it is, lost each other's contact. And the moment they do, the child jumps and unites to his parents like he didn't see them in years and they just holds on to them and cleaves to them and 
and and doesn't want anything. Just even at that point, doesn't want even part from them to go onto the ride. Onto the ride because they just want to be very very close to their parent. And I say this because in the end of the day, this is the most great thing you could tell a yid that you don't have a part in in the case of the God of Israel. Every yid wants to be close to Hashem, and the the most difficult information a yid would hear that he's, he's there's a sever in the connection. Which a yid knows, in essence, every avid, every sin, every thought, speech, and action, which is um, not aligned with, or which Hashem says, do not do, do not speak, do not think. And when you do, in the end of the day, it severs the relationship with Hakadosh Baruch Hu for a moment. The Dalit Rebbe famously has Tehidik Chaf Hey, Chaf Hey in Tanya and a few other places, but you can see Chaf Hey Lukuti Amon. It's a quick way. The idea that which yid would want to disconnect. From Hakadosh Baruch Hu, even for a moment, even though he knows there's the idea of tshuva, but nonetheless, on the onset, no regular, normal, healthy yid wants to disconnect himself from Hashem. And for that matter, so many times the Yitzhakara comes and says, "No, the big, the big abedus, the grave sins, the cardinal sins, uh, the famous three cardinals. That's when you, or the sin of idolatry. That's when you disconnect yourself." from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because you're renouncing the oneness of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, of course, there you disconnect, but you do a small abey, you're not, you're not really disconnecting, which is, of course, part of the tactic of the Yitzhahar, as Al-Tarebi again elaborates this in the first chapters, in your Beis, your Gimel, your Dalit, and other places before, of course, al Rebbe speaks about what transpires when a person does an abey, or he falls into the abyss, there's a total disconnect, Rahman al-Islam. So, this is part of the tactic of the Yitzhahar, it says, no, that's not, but Al-Tarebi, you learn a little time, or any, you know, safer explaining that every Aveda really is Leil Chaliki Machayim, which is the second one of the Ten Commandments. You shall not have any other God, because you're connecting to other other areas, other spirits, which are nothing, which is a complete disconnect. And so to every mitzvah is a Nechi It's the connection mitzvahs Moshin Tzavsa Bechiva that oneness. So a yid does always mitzvahs. He doesn't skip a mitzvah because a yid, in essence, wants to hold on like a child ever wants to sever the connection with a parent. That's the na- nature of a yid, the famous part of the al- famous expression of the Alter Rebbe, a yid nishter viu, nishter ken, zayin, up to zundar, from HaKadosh Baruch A yid not he wants to, and not he can be separated from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's the calling of the neshama. Famous al- the Russian Alter Rebbe, what happens, Achman HaSalam, when the person does give in to his, the, 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 the signal of Nefshah Bahamis, how pain the Nefshah Likis is, the godly for its force, it's compelled. Famous expression at the end of 24th chapter, Lukutia Morim. And again, Kolas Svari Malayim, the Dabarat Sol's Tanya gives you know, perspective that we should understand. Mm. You know, how to maintain our constant connection with the Kuzbrach, which is again the innate desire and the, and the greatest, the most grand and deepest and most profound desire of every single Yid, not even for a moment. To separate themselves from the Kodesh Baruch. So I just maybe just elaborated a little too much because you, we can appreciate that a certain Avedas, every Aveda person severs the connection, but there's certain Avedas which there's certain conducts of the Yid that the Chazal would tell him, you do not have a part of the God of Israel. Achman al Islam. So well, let's go on, let's move on over here. So the question that Rebbe is getting at, right, maybe it took, it took a little much more time over here, but let's move to the. the, the uh, it's a str- just to understand, it's a strong, it's a strong expression. But the Alter Rebbe is pointing out the word You don't have a part in the God of Israel. So, what is that supposed to mean? Hashem is not, you know, there's no divisiveness with the Kodesh Baruch Hu. to say there's he's, he's a compilation of parts. No, Hashem is everything about Hashem is the expression blushing in Chassidus and Kabbalah. Poshul betachus apshitus. It's it's everything. The oneness is what Hakadosh Baruch Hu is all about. It's not there's no divisiveness. He's not he's not made up of parts. What does it mean? You don't have a part in the God of Israel. That seems to say that so to suggest that Hashem is made up of parts and you don't have a part of the God of Israel. You don't see that part of Hashem. You don't have that part of Hashem. What is that supposed to mean? Hashem is all about oneness. It's not a it's not a combination of parts. Asks the Alter Rebbe. It's not divided into parts. So the explains, and, 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 and nonetheless, they did choose this expression, and it was for a reason, which 
is is synonymous with the choice of chelik in the Tehillim, the few times, the few psukim the Al-Tarebbe, the verses the Al-Tarebbe brings over here, and the prayer of Asher Nebatev Chelkeinu, the, cho- the choice of Chelkeinu in the context of the Ashreinu, this which we say prior to we start Davni. Achainian, to understand, so the idea to understand this, Look, it says, <coughs> that he called Hashem the God of Israel. For that matter, it says, and then Rashi brings it, that Hashem called Yaakov Avinu, also Kael. It's important to see that, see the first time in Teda Semis, in Teda Shabik what a tzaddik, what a true tzaddik is all about. He's not a separate entity. He's one with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not to go into it now, the famous Man Pniyot in Hashem, which uh, when the Tana told Rav Shem Yechoi, Dor as where Rav Shem Yechoi himself, if it's if there's two, it's me and my son, uh, Elazar, they, it, because Rav Shem Yechoi, in other words, speaking about themselves, about a kind of an extension of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, because they were an extension of Hakadosh because they didn't have any. Anything of their like Moshe Rabbeinu said, "Venachnu Ma." They were completely bottled to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, completely submit, submitted to Hakadosh Baruch Hu in absolute terms. So they were. That's what they were called. The Merkava. Not to go into it now at all, for that matter. We spoke about it in the past. And we, the Altarev mentions of the Oves, and a few times a time they were called the Merkava, a chariot. A chariot has no desire. It's only what the rider on the chariot. It's the desire of the rider on the chariot. Wherever the rider of the chariot wants to go, that's where the chariot goes. And it, it doesn't even argue. It doesn't even have its own statement, I want to go left, oh, you're the chariot, you're the rider, so of course you have you're the, you have the one with the reins or the authority to tell me where to go, and I must submit myself to you, and I'll go right, even though I want to go left. No, the chariot does nothing of that. It's on the onset completely batel, means it completely stands with an absolute submission to the rider. So too the tzaddikim are completely battled to Akash Baruch Hashem has certain plans, and the tzaddik throughout the entire lifetime, again, not everybody you can say that are covered to a control. Most of the people, a significant majority of the Am Yisrael, even those who are devote themselves to a Kodesh Baruch Hu, they still have their bit of eye. Yes, their bit of eye. Then they submit ultimately themselves to a Kodesh Baruch Hu. But to call them a Merkava, that no eye, no ego at all, not only no ego, but nothing of them, nothing of of, of self identity. It's all about the Ratzon of a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kodesh Baruch Hu. Hashem is the writer, and Hashem has a certain mandate and plan. And they are the ones who are implementing it. They are called Merkava to HaKadosh Baruch Therefore, for that matter, it says that's why Hashem calls Yaakov Kael. You can see it in Rashi. This is Pshut Shomikra. People think it's associated with, with, uh, with, with, uh, with Kabbalah, Zayar, Chassidus. No, no, no. This is clear Pshut Shomikra. Vayikar Hashem Loi Kael. Hashem calls Yaakov Kael God because Yaakov is bottled to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Yaakov is no Mitzis. He's a Merkava to HaKadosh But not to go into it now. Which is synonymous with different to this which we mentioned. Man Pneod in Hashem. It's clearly written, Man Pneod in Hashem, the Tana tells of Shemichai Darash B. Because he had no, you know, he had nothing. He had, there's nothing which was, every, everything about him, he served the Kodesh Baruch Hu as an Evan Nemo, an Evan Poshu, completely bottled to a Kodesh Baruch Hu without no entity at all. So he's an extension, called Yachal HaKodesh Baruch Hu, which is again, but here, the simple meaning, the Yaakov builds a Mizbech, by Yikro Loi, and he calls Hashem Kelo Luke Yisro. Okay, the simple meaning. Uh, maybe a little going off over here, but, but it's good to know that, uh, good to see Peter Shrashi. Good to see Peter Shrashi. And to understand that it's all anchored in Teir Semis, to understand what a real tzaddik is. A tzaddik, especially Abraham and Yaakov, it's not like, you know, it's a tzaddik bala ear. Tzaddik is a different level. I'll tell you in the very first chapter, it says one is not a tzaddik, the way Teir described a tzaddik. There's nothing, uh, if he has even a yitzhar hara, he can't be called a tzaddik. Which person can you say there's no Yitzhak Hara at all? Anyway, it's not to go into it now because it's sometimes, I mean, maybe it is worth it a little bit to understand that sometimes it's used, you know, cheaply. It's tzaddik. And the, the, there's a Meshir Abeinu, there's a Baram Yitzhak Yaakov, there's a Meshir Abeinu in every generation. It's a different idea completely. A different idea completely, completely. And by Miriam, it's one of the things that says the Abishta was upset of Miriam. Not only that, what she never spoke bad, she never liked the Ramam writes, she never actually was his brother. He's, Miriam saved Moshe Rabbeinu. Miriam was a close brother to Moshe Rabbeinu. She didn't have any, anything negative. There was no, no negativity. 
millions were the only thing is one of the things what it says in Sifri Musa and Sifri Chassidus famous Rashi Rashi points this out also when it comes to the Miladim just speaking about a Meishah Rabbeinu talking about a Meishah Rabbeinu we have no understanding what a Meishah Rabbeinu is just to talk about Meishah Rabbeinu is, is an issue already find it by the Miradim it says why did Meishah Rabbeinu save them if he had the ability to pray for all of Am Yisrael and to have them 40 years, those were 20, had 40 years in the Midbar with a man, with all the miracles, with Meishe Rabbeinu. And the Menachem, were, were there, the life ended right then. You know, the Misa Mashuna, as we see again, the Pasuk says, Rashi, the Gemara says, the Seita, Rashi brings it up. Why did, why, what, what was wrong with, what, why, why did Meishe's prayer have an impact on them? And the answer is famous, they spoke against Meishe Rabbeinu. As it says, it says, Beginning, you say, you see, they spoke against Eretz Yisrael. They spoke against Hashem, which that could have been. Meishe Rabbeinu could have extended the erech apayim of Hakadosh Baruch Hu, or elicited by Hakadosh Baruch Hu the, the, the erech, his erech apayim on the Menachem also, even though they caused this whole catastrophe, which is a catastrophe for 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 gen, for, for all of time. As the Alter the famous uh, Gemara in Seita, you cried that night. You, this is the night, unfortunately, the, the night which which was the night of Tisha B'av. Which Am Yisrael cried, generations to come. Unfortunately, so they caused this whole catastrophe. But there, there was still room. But later, the pasuk says they they they, they rallied against Meishe Rabbeinu. They spoke against Meishe Rabbeinu. Ain kategin nasus The prosecutor cannot be the defender, or the, def- the, the, the cannot be a defender. In other words, the 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 uh, the, the, Meish, the you're disqualifying it's like the idea of Yom Kippur if someone violates Yom Kippur Yom Kippur cannot be a day of atonement can not atone for the sin because Yom Kippur is a certain energy and that energy of Yom Kippur has the ability to atone for all the sins of the of, of, uh, of, Yid, of the Yid the individual or collective, or collectively of Am Yisrael but if when someone violates Yom Kippur deliberately namely deliberately advertently so that he 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 he, he he, he ignores and he, and he and he belittles or he desecrates that very energy which is supposed to be an atonement for him. So where is the energy to atone for him? In Kategir, not Sanegir, because Aaron could not wear the gold when he went into the Kedusha Kedushim because the Kategir, which was again the the Egel, which was the golden calf, cannot be around when Aaron Akain is there to elicit the Kapara, which is by all definitions, the greatest accomplishment to receive a kapara, a atonement from HaKadosh Baruch for, 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 for the for Kenim, Arnakim, for the King Godl, right? King Godl, we don't understand in Tzadikim, we understand, understand whatever the Shaykh is to, but the Kenim, for all of Am So the, the gold cannot be in the, that area. And so too, they spoke against Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's what the Rosh and Rashi says, there's Dibo. Dibo doesn't mean negative. Very interesting, very interesting Rashi. In Parsha Shlach, you see, it doesn't say Dibo, Rashi says, Dibo could be translated, Dibo Lero, Dibo Letoibo. The mere talking about a tzaddik is quite grave. A tzaddik is a different level. And not everybody is a tzaddik. It could be good yidin and people who devote themselves to teira and to be marbit teira. But the tzaddik, a tzaddik, a deir, a meishir abeinu, like the Rav, the famous Gemara and Shabbos, meishir shapika amnit, it's a different level. It's a merkava to lakus. It's a total different idea completely. It's, it's worthwhile also to, to appreciate this the famous this Rashi. He was just telling us, establishing us in the very first Chumash, Chumash what a tzaddik is, what a vro mitzvah Yaakov is. Not every person is, is something that... It's, it, we have to be careful. We do have to be careful. Because a Yaakov of Eno, a Yikro Lekev... Okay, so we took a little, maybe too much time, a little or extra time, but it's worth it to maybe to point this out. Because this is written in Teda Semis, but the simple meaning, and let's go on. Um, that Hashem, that Yaakov, you know, calls Kael, he builds up, builds up, and he's Beach, and he calls Hashem Kael, God, the God of Israel, which you see again, redundancy over here, what, what's Kael and Elokei Yisrael. Also, Yaakov is called Yaakov, and then here he's called Yisrael. We know Yaakov had two names, and of course, the Teda itself. As the Gemara asks why um, Avraham, we're not supposed to call Avraham Avram after a Teda calls him Avram. But when it comes to Yaakov, the Gemara asks, why do we call Yaakov Yaakov if the Teda changed his name? Hashem is, Hashem is talking to the Malach, and then Hashem authenticated it, calling Yaakov Yisrael. Why do we call 
Yaakov Yaakov again. So the Gemara answers because the Torah itself calls Yaakov Yaakov. So it's something you have to understand why the Torah calls him Yaakov after Torah established the name Yisrael. And it's explained there's two levels, which is again related to the Yiddish. The Yaakov, Yud Ekev, and there's Yisrael, which is a, a name of, uh, a supreme <clears throat> name of Yaakov, the way he represents himself, of course, and then his message is being the the, the message for Am Yisrael, the choices of the Obis, in Kodesh, Obis, of the Shleisha, Maisa, Obis, Sim, Levonim, they're there to give the, the, the direction of all their descendants to the, to the end of all generations. So there's the Yaakov idea within the Yiddin, the Yisrael, the, the royal name Yisrael, the Yerush, as opposed to Yaakov, as opposed to the soul of the, of the heel, the Yaakov, which is again the difference of the gender. It says Shabbos, the Yid is the Yisrael, and the whole week is, is, is Yaakov. He has to come down into the realities in the degree of Elam and therefore for that matter, the Matzah Shabbos, famous, famous uh, one of his meetings, Al Tira Abdi Yaakov. He is very bothered. He comes from a state of Yisrael, and he plummets the state of Yaakov. He needs a support, of course. You compare Shabbos, in which the person celebrates, you have that unique ability to connect to so, Akkadj Baruch Hu, and there's, there's no comparison. There's no comparison, because there's the Shabbos, everything is elevated. All, oh, there's aliyahs of all Elamists, so to namely, primarily the Yid. Chiefly, primarily, the Yid has the ability to connect in that unique manner of connection with Akkadj Baruch Hu, Shabbos. Again, this is self-evident. Feel it to Shabbos, the meditate of Shabbos. That's the Yisrael, the Lir Reish. The Yid stands with the pride of the Reish. And then it's the plummet to Yaakov to deal with the nitty gritty of Elam Hazar, to do the six days of creation. That's the Yaakov, the Yud, to draw the Elokus, the Nikud of Chochmah, into the Akev again, spoken about in so many places. And therefore, the Yid is it's, it's a great disappointment. This is the reason why we smell the Psalm. But this is part of the Mizminus Al Tira. We say Al Tira, we see Al Tira, the Yaakov. You're coming into the state of Eved. To do what Hashem wants, al tira, because there's a mandate, there's a, a purpose, there's an objective, there's a goal into that. So we find this Yaakov and Yisrael, in, so in, in, in Tate himself, again, for this reason, calls Yaakov. And Yisrael, because there's two messages within the Avedah of the Yid. Making this, making this share a little, like a Fabrengen a little bit, in, in, pointing out a little too much over here um, in details. But, not, but in, you know, in the end of the day, this is important information. So we'll, we'll uh, take, take, take a little bit longer, because... Uh, because uh, yeah, because it's not totally out of the you know cont- uh, context, even though you know, to get the flow, Yaakov calls Hashem and Kelly K Yisrael. Nonetheless, over here it's Yaakov calling. Before it says Yaakov, here he calls the God of Yisrael, which is again he jumps to that other name. Why the contrast in such close proximity? So what does this mean? So the Altarebbe continues explains again. Through the lens of Chassidus over here, Pirush, Kinebem, and Sakhosh Baruch Hu, When we talk about Akhosh Baruch Hu, as you hear, Akhosh Baruch Hu is the holy, which is again has the connotation of withdrawn, separate, Kodesh. Baruch Hu, he is blessed, blessed is also the Russian. Amavrich, he's connected. And together with his being connected, Baruch, he is drawn down, nonetheless, he remains Kodesh. Akhosh Baruch Hu, which, you know, on its own, it's. it's it, it could be, it is, two separate messages and, and opposite messages. Baruch Hu means to say, he comes out in the Lashon of Mavri Chesa Gefen, in the Lashon of Memalek he, he he focuses downwards, if you will. Mavri Chesa Gefen, you're bringing something downward, dealing with this which is lower and yet lower, dealing, vitalizing it. This is the point of Kodesh Baruch being the creator. And together with that, he's Kodesh. Kodesh means he's holy, removed, withdrawn. But that's what a Kodesh Baruch Hu is, a Kodesh Baruch Hu. So as he, as he continues to explain, even though Kodesh Baruch Hu is the Baruch Hu, he fills all the world, meaning he vitalizes every single detail, <clears throat> which makes it different, different, which differentiates one world from another. It's how much energy is coming with pre- precision and specificity. Every Eilam, the amount of highest amount of energy which creates that oilam, which makes that oilam, that world, is an example distinct from a lower world, which has less uh, of the energy, which makes it a lower world. Of course, it's not different stories. No, it's it's how much energy it receives from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it's again by design and with maximum precision and within every single oilam, there's the sphere, the Chochmah, Bina, Das, and the Malachim, the Nishamis, and there's oilam, and then Ketz, as the Altar himself, it has this lush in him towards the end of Lukut Amorim infinite amount of elements, but this is the Hashem's memale, by 
the Mali, in every, in every, in every, in every even in Elam Haza, there's millions and billions and beyond that of creatures, and, and, and each one so distinct, and we don't even know how many is in every, in every species, as much as we know today within creation, and in the last hundred years, we know so much, but it's still just the tip of the iceberg of what really this very creation is all about. How many cells does a person like one human being have? You're talking about the trillions. This is something which is beyond the capacity of human being, the human mind, to understand Hashem's investment in creation. And everything is, again, there's no such a thing just that happened. It's by design with, and with, 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 um, with precision. So Hashem Mimale, He fills, He becomes the creator. Baruch Hu, He gets involved, not He gets involved. His involvement establishes creation on all levels. The supreme worlds, the inferior worlds, Mereima Mailas from the highest of heights, and Mitachas Lord, it's Allah Zuachumis, till the lowest levels of this very physical and mundane world. This is the Yamar Chulivin says, the, the divine providence of the small fish which is in the Mediterranean. It's Hashem's decision that the bigger fish should swallow the smaller one, and everything what happens in the depth of the oceans is with, with precision and design or, 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 or decision. And, and in every area of Elam Hazim. And he says, not only in the, the more refined part of the Hazim, but the, in, in the Chumri, in the, in, the, in the mundane part of Elam Hazim, which means the highest of heights and the lowest of lows, it's a Baruch Hu's involvement. And Hashem, yet Hashem remains Kaddish, as a famous expression. Don't define a Baruch Hu via Elamis. That's a... It's a degradation. It's a, it's it's a it's it's not fair, and it's not only not only fair. It's just chas v'shalom to define because Hashem is involved in creation. Therefore, I'll define God by creation. No, who Hashem remains kaddish. That's what Dalit Rebbe says. Kishmeke no, it's baruch hu, but nonetheless, he's kaddish. He's transcendent. He remains a kaddish baruch hu. He remains the melech malchem melachem a kaddish baruch removed, he's not nitfas, he's not captured, or he's not, uh, he's not, his investment in Eilam, again, but in, with detail and specificity, but nonetheless, there's no, he's not um, defined and limited, despite he establishes and creates the whole phenomenon of limitation and detail within limitation, especially when you deal with the limitation which exists with Eilam Hazard. And you need fast For example, the neshama, which in, comes into a body, it's impacted by the body. If it's cold, the person's uncomfortable. If it's hot, it has to deal with the heat. You deal with someone has a pain, pain in left hand, for example. You can't even express his right hand in the same way because he's nitvas. He's ca- he's he's captivated by what the neshama, the neshama's investment in the body. And we're not even talking about the godly soul. We're talking about just the neshama, the, the nefesh, which vitalizes the body. It invests. It's also mamale. And for that matter, Chazal tells us, ma neshama, just like the neshama invests in the body, so takosh baruch hu's mamale kol ha'elam. But nonetheless, there's of course a distinction because the nefesh is invested in its nitvas. It, it's, it's impacted by the guf. And therefore, everything that happens to the body, the nefesh is impacted. If it's pleasure, pain, and so on. Shal Hashem help, which will only be pleasure, but it, it, it invests, but whatever happens with the body impacts the, the, the nefesh. When it comes to Kodesh Baruch Hu, yes, it's nitfas. In other words, it's, it's, it's nislabesh. He creates. He's memalek kolam, but chas v'shom to say, Hu mekeim esholeilam. I'm sorry, ain't a ha'elam mekeim? No. Hu mekeim esholeilam, but ain't a ha'elam mekeim? He always remains Kodesh. He always remains withdrawn. No one should say, oh, Hashem, it's a cold day out there. Hashem is creating that cold. Yes, of course. It doesn't become cold without Hashem's decision. That day or night is going to be a cold day or a cold night. Because there's divine providence in every single detail within creation of the highest of heights and the lowest of lows, like the Al-Tarebbe writes in one line, the lowest areas within this physical world. But nonetheless, to say, oh, it's a cold night. Yes, created by Kodesh Baruch Hu, designed or decided by Kodesh Baruch Hu to be a cold night. So Hashem is a bit cold that night because He invests, He's the Malakal. I mean, He creates this cold weather. So what, is that cold? No, it's not cold. Cold, hot, day, night.
Dovra Mela famously says it at the end of Tillin. Tachashech l'ka'ero, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. He messed up Shemayim Shemat with Tia Shel Neko. Is also the Avedus Hashem, but generally it's Tachashech l'ka'ero. It's dark and not light. Hashem is not nitfas, not impacted by this in itself, which He is memalu, which He fills. That's why it's Baruch, but Hashem always remains Kodesh. Therefore, when we call Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, which encapsulates Hashem's connection or Hashem's investment in Olam and remaining Kaddish, remaining removed, withdrawn, who remains out Kaddish Baruch. And yes, every detail within heaven and earth is, you have Hashem's investment. As it says, heaven and earth, Ani Mole. Nothing happens just like that. Just, you know, got the ball rolling and now it's just things are happening on its own. Nothing happens on its own. Everything, every blade of grass, the movement of the blade of grass, the famous story that, you know, not to go off over here, yeah, not to go off over here much, but the famous story, the Baal Shem Tov, of course, brought this message home, if you will, to the minds and hearts of his Talmudim and his Talmudim throughout all generations, the idea of the Ashkoch of Protis and every single, every single part of creation. Once it's Talmudim, it's a blade of grass growing in a certain, or the wind blowing in a certain direction, and the branch and the, uh, moving in a certain direction, everything is by divine providence. Once it's Talmidim, again, famous story, the Talmidim, you know, living in the field, they felt it was a conducive time to ask the Baal Shem to, to not only they should know it, in a, in a, in a, as, a, as, a, as a piece of information, but they should be able to see it, they should be able to be evident of this. The Baal Shem Tev opened up the window a bit, and he said, and the, the wind was blowing, and a leaf fell off the tree, and the Talmidim told his Talmidim to follow that very leaf. So they followed the very leaf, and the leaf stopped at a certain place. The Baal Shem Tev told one Talmidim to pick up the leaf, and right on the leaf there was a there was a, a, a worm, and it was it was a very hot day. And, the, and the, the, the ground was very hot, and the sun was baking on the worm. Well, to explain the the the, the, uh, the Talmidim that the worm was about to expire because it couldn't tolerate the heat. And mercy and all of that. And so Hashem decided the worm should stay alive. So Hashem blew the wind few meters away or whatever how much away the leaf should come off the tree because of the wind and the leaf would roll and stop right over the worm to be a shadow to be a shade over the worm and to protect the worm from the heat of the sun and be able to spare the blood the life of the worm of course it was an eye-opener for the Talmidim and this is one of the stories which again it, it brought out uh, the 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 which means it, it made it more real in other words, it was something that it wasn't just, it was one, one story. There's many stories, of course, of the Baal Shem Tov. There's so many stories in his demonstrating the divine providence. Again, the whole Anhelga of the Baal Shem Tov was to reveal the Elokus, the godly reality, is again, the Achonet, the Mesa Mashiach, and the Baal came with the Chassidus Chabad, ultimately the ultimate Achona preparation for the Mesa Mashiach, which, what does it say, Mashiach will come? The Molech Vedis, Kolod, is Hashem's cup before the entire land. Molod, it's Deus Hashem. Not only Chochmas Hashem, Binas Hashem, Deyas Hashem, it has become real, and it become alive. Again, the Al-Tareb, in the end of chapter 3, in the Kuti Amor, the difference of Das, and Chochmas Bina, and Mol Ha'oretz, and Be'la Yashem HaMelech Al Kol Ha'oretz, the world will be in, 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 saturated with the knowledge of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And, and as, as Al-Dramam writes, in the end of the, end of the Rama, Mishnah Teir, the magnum opus of the Al-Tareb, of the Rama, that he says, there it doesn't even refer to the year. The whole world's occupation will be to know Akkadj Baruch, knowing Akkadj Baruch. So, this again, the Baal Shem Tov began this, uh, but, 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 but it's a Pasik. It's a Pasik in, in Teda Samis. That I fill the heaven and earth. So, here he's not talking about the, the, the uh, and again, the, the reason why there's Ashkach Prat is what's behind it. Behind this, like Dr. Rebbe explains. Of of the in, in Shari Chavimuna, the first chapter in Shari Chavimuna, click away. He's mentioned this is you know, it's quotes of Balshevta, but it's based on the Medish too. That it's not Hashem created the world in six, the six days of creation and then it just continues to be. No, Amachadish Bechtuvi Becholim Tam Masvedish the Chesh Baruch continues to create every moment. Leilum Dvar Hashem Nitzav Hashemayim, which is again the Balshevta expanded on this, but basically it's a Medish Tulim that the Dvar Hashem's words, which Hashem created heaven and earth. As we know, Hashem spoke creation into being. So it's the words of HaKadosh Baruch Hu which create heaven and earth. But it's not only 
the Medrash says that Hashem created it then, but in other words, every moment Hashem talked creation into being, and if Hashem would pull back on that energy, the same energy which He invested to create the world, that Hashem would pull back after the six days of creation, that energy, the world would turn into nothing, no thing at all, not just fall apart, decay, whatever. It would just completely disappear because it's existed now is because of the words of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which HaKadosh Baruch Hu is pumping energy, vitalizing energy, um, um, every single element, every detail in Eilam, just like it was when Hashem created the world. Every moment, every second, every millisecond, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is the creator of every single detail within all the elements. So consequently, there's divine providence because Hashem is creating it and everything is with decision. And it's every moment, not by the six days of creation. So of course, the Baal Shem Tov pointed out that this without Baal Shem Tov, the Al-Tarebbe brings us from the Baal Shem Tov, the Baal Shem Tov pointed out this idea, again, based on this Medrash Tilim, that of course is constantly creating. So of course there's divine providence, which if you tap into it, you can see it. And if we're wise enough as we navigate through our you know, our journey, our uh, odyssey in El Maza, if we open our eyes, we allow, we allow ourselves to appreciate the divine providence because HaKadosh Baruch Hu's B'chayim Ha'abes constant, a constant basis. So this is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's involvement. As a Shamayim, B'sa'oretz, Ani Malei, Ayinfil, Ani Mamosh, which is Musvat Muskav Yoki. Lake Vedil Bad, it's not only just a, it's HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, not only the Kavay, which is the ray of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, that's the point of Ani. But nonetheless, Chas V'Shalom, to define HaKadosh Baruch via the world, because there is Ani, HaKadosh Baruch is invested in the world, and everything is by decision, and by with, with precision. So therefore, I am going to define HaKadosh Baruch via HaKadosh Baruch creation, because he's so involved, and he's so invested. No, the Pazik says he's Kaddish. This is the, the terminology. Of course, he's removed from the supreme, uh, the, the superior, the inferior, which means the higher world, the lowest world, and, and then this world. He's not impacted or captured, if you will, within them to say that the 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 the, 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 the finite ness which exists within Eilam ultimately. Hashem is connected in such a way that you could relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu via this which HaKadosh Baruch Hu creates and say, oh, that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu is because similar to the Neshama, when the Nefesh, and again, not Nefesh the Kis, as we said, just the, the, the vitalizing force, vitalizing force which enters into the body and gives light to the body, into the ear, the audio to the ear, and the vision to the eye. And again, it's all about detail. It's all about detail and specificity when it comes to the nefesh, which is b'chai, the gulf. And then everything works because of the nerve system which the nefesh enters into the brain and into the, and into the blood, and everything circulates and therefore everything functions, and the person is able to walk and to talk and to feel and so on and so forth. But yet, because it invests in it, it has an impact on it. If chas v'shalom, somebody gets hurt, gets a bad bruise, the nefesh has pain because it's invested in it. It's nitfas. It's kind of captured in it, and therefore it's impacted, and it's imprinted by the nefesh, it's impacted by the by the goof which it invests and gives chayis to, and therefore it has sar. If chas v'shalom, the body is bruised, the nefesh has sar, the nefesh reacts, the nefesh is, the nefesh, you know, could, doesn't have the ability to function regularly, or to appreciate even other experiences of that very body. When a person's hurt in one area, this, 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 everything is somewhat compromised one way or another. Not directly as the body which is stricken, part of the body which is stricken, but nonetheless, because of its investment, it's impacted. It doesn't function the same way. And it has pain from that particular place which is impacted. And if it's pleasure, it's pleasure and so on and so forth. But when HaKadosh Baruch Hu, no, Kodesh, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu is removed from Eliyam of Eliyam. Ain't it with Kual B'Seichem, Chas V'Shalom, of course, Kitfisas, Nishma Sadam, Begufay, like the Neshama. Again, he's not talking about the godly soul. He's talking about the Nefesh of the person in his body. Al Derech Moshe, Mishuz Bar Machmach Barichas, like it's explained elsewhere in a, in, in, in a lengthy manner. But Al-Tarab has a number of places and in other places, in these famous chapters, in Kedik Medbeis and Kuti Amorim, which is again a click away in Shaykh Memuno, he has it in Kedik Zayin. Of course, 
in detail that the Abish is Chas Vashol, not in Tvas Besaychom, who became as we know in the Kaidim. Chas Vachalila. Kachashech Kaida, darkness, cold. There's no, it doesn't impact the Kudra. Because what remains aloof, remains Kodesh, removed, transcendent, as he is simultaneously being the Ashra Shemayim Esar. It's a Nim Male that I'm filling. I'm the one who's Mamalakalam, and simultaneously I'm Kodesh. I'm the Melech Lacham 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 I am aloof, and I'm not impacted. By this, which I made myself, myself created. Now, Dr. Rebbe is going to get at. We're going to have to stop over here. Maybe we could do another little piece. I'm not sure. Another little piece over here. But so, so the, the, the so the, 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 the point is that Dr. Rebbe is saying. Uh, let's see. Let's try. Maybe it's a little lengthier today. But let's. Uh, but let's see. Dr. Rebbe is saying so because the core of Akush Baruch Hu is invested in creation. How could a creation, which is a finite, everything about creation, even the highest levels of the creation, the highest elements, the highest worlds, how much more so the, lo- the, the lower the worlds evolve, ri, tzira, siya from each other, and so on. Again, the involvement of what elements, down the chain of say that ishtalshu is an elema siya. This is the, the epitome, this visible world is the epitome of, of the spirit of the finite finitude, limitation. So how could a finite world or a world, any world, which is by definition, Gemara says, native in Eilam Malashin Helam Vahestir. It's a concealment of Rakhon Baruch. Rakhon Baruch is not Eilam, famous expression. The greatest Yerid of Rakhon Baruch is to be called a Beire. You can't celebrate Rakhon Baruch and, and establish the greatness of Rakhon Baruch to be called a creator. No, it's a, it's a, it's a degradation. It's a, degra- it's a derogatory term that Hashem gets involved in Bria because Hashem is transcendent of that. Hashem is Ein Sof. Hashem is limitless. So how could the Ein Sof connect, the Ani, the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, connect with Eilamis, in particular Eilamis Tachtenim, in particular this world? How could that be? And the answer, that Hashem is involved, but ultimately there is the extension. It's like what warms up the world? Of course it's the sun, it's the ball of the sun, the illuminator. The, the, the sun itself, but nonetheless, if the sun itself would land and I, you know, the, oh, it's so beautiful in my backyard. I just came from my backyard. I sat out there. The 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 the, 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 the sun. It, it was such a beautiful day. It's such a sunny day, and so on. Yeah, but if the sun came close to your backyard, there wouldn't be no backyard. There wouldn't be the person in the backyard, his home, and so on. So it's not the sun. It's the ray of the sun. The sun is up there in the sky. But the ray of the sun brings the warmth, the pleasantness, the heat, and so on. And so forth. So it's this. Of course, it's the sun. Which ultimately, you know, makes brings that pleasantness. But it can't be the core of the sun itself because the sun itself is too hot. It says a number of places that the sun emits would go even even so in, 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 in minimally a bit closer to the earth. The earth would be consumed into the heat of the sun. Part of the greatness, the great. The 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 the, the, uh, the divine providence of Hakadosh Baruch Hu keeping the sun in a, its particular place in order that it should have its impact and Eilam on this very physical world and in, 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 in other places in the universe, of course, but in a way that there should be that that uh, the ability of the world to be able to contain and, and, and the the, uh, the pleasantness and this what the sun brings in a positive manner, meaning to say that it's a warm day. It could not be too warm, meaning to say the sun became, came a little closer, everything would have been consumed into the heat of the sun. So the sun is in its perfect spot, and it's in a way that if it, it doesn't come really, really close, too close, because again, there wouldn't be nor nothing. Everything would have been really consumed and burnt up to the heat of the sun. So the sun is what brings the warmth. The sun is what brings the pleasantness, but nonetheless, it's not the sun itself. It's the ray of the sun extending itself from the sun. And again, with a perfect measurement and symmetry, the world is able to appreciate the heat of the sun, the pleasantness of the sun, as an example. And so too, of course, the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, which is the infinite in self. It, it's, it is the sole creator, but it can be manifest the way it is, and together with that, establish and create a creation which is finite, so what Hashem does, it's the ray of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is ultimately what comes down in the energy of the ray, which is of course coming from Hashem, which ultimately creates, vitalizes, vivifies, and so on. 
and based on the amount of energy, there's an Elam Elyon, a supreme world, a lower world, a lower world, and so on and so forth. It's explained a number of times. And that's what he says, Lezais, because you're talking about Hashem Leichad, Kabach Yisrael Mahus Vath Musil Levadi Kaviyachu, from the core of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Raki Spash, the Sachai, is just the extension of energy, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Mechai Elyon Vetachtenim, which HaKadosh Baruch Hu vitalizes the supreme world and the lower world. That's similar. Like a ray which is shining from HaKadosh Baruch Hu's name. And even Shu Shmayachad, even the name of Akadj Baruch Hu cannot itself be the vitalizing force which enters into creation because who is Shmayachad Hashem and his name is one and in his name also one way or another carries the infinite energy of Akadj Baruch Hu, just like Akadj Baruch Hu himself. So that's why it says Kinizkov Shmayut, Mashukasov Kinizkov Shmailabade, Rak Hoidel and Shma. So we say every day in the Avenue, which is the end of Sal, the end of the Tehillim, that Hashem's name is exalted. His ray is of heaven and earth. So Chassidus Taiches, so beautifully, so there's the simple meaning of the, of the Pasuk, of course. The phrase of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, uniquely to David HaMelech, and the Imz Midas Yisrael, but the Alter Rebbe, the, the Chassidus can come and explain, the Alter Rebbe has it many times, the Kodesh Baruch Hu, the Teira, and in Tanya alludes to this idea, that even the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, because Hashem Echad Ushmi Echad, Hashem's infinity, Infinite power cannot really connect with the finite, can do whatever it wants, of course, but because you're talking about the infinite of a Baruch Hu, to create the finite, the finite cannot stand in the face of the infinite, it will be completely consumed. If the world cannot stand, if the sun became a little too close, got a little too close to the planet Earth, the planet Earth would be burnt up into the, uh, into the heat of the sun. And this is the heat of the sun, which is also a creation of a Baruch Hu. You're talking about the infinite light of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Nothing finite can stand in the face of the infinite. So there, the Hashem, there's the Hu, the Hashem, Hashem, Hashem Himself, which is again, the Ein Saf of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, remains exalted. You have the shame, the name of Hashem, which is of course a generation, a step lower, because just like by a person, there's who, your, you and your name. Your name is not who you are. There's you and you carry a name. So it's a generous, a step lower. In other words, it's a minimization. A dismination of of the of the energy of the who to the shmai, but the pasuk says Hashem echad who shmai echad Hashem and His name are ultimately one. So of course the shmai is a set in, of a generation, a step less of the infinite energy of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Nonetheless, it's still connected. For that matter, similar to the person, we become somewhat one with our name. Hashem's name, of course, it's a it's a it's a step lower. A dismunition of Hashem's infinite energy, but nonetheless, it's still Shmei Shalak Baruch Hashem Echad Shmei Echad. So you have a ray of that Shmei. So it's Ha'ara de Ha'ara, a ray of a ray. There's the Hu, there's the Shmei, and there's the Haid of and Ziv and the ray of the Shmei. Ultimately, it becomes less and less, so to say, there's a, a, a minimization. Uh, this munition of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's energy, which ultimately is able to create the finite, of course, with Hashem's decision. But that's because it's minimized, the energy is minimized a, into a Ha'ara, De Ha'ara, a number of places it says. It's much more than that. You see in Shaykh of because we talk about the infinite energy of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so even your few generations, so to say, a few steps away, it also carries a certain infinity which. The finite cannot stand in the face of that great light. So there's order, the order, the order. And again, Alter takes his energy, uh, Hashem takes his energy and puts it into gematriois, into shamus, into names, into different, so to say, the, the, the phenomena of the numerical values, which brought in Sefer Yitzira, Ad Bash, and so on. Again, not to go in now, into it now, you see that the first chapter of Shar Yichad Vemuno, the second segment of Tanya, click away. But generally, there's Hu, Shmei, and there's the next step, which is Ziv. And that this is what we say every single day in Davin, in Kinesk of Shmei Levad, even Shmei is exalted. Because of Hashem Echad Shmei Echad. And Hoide Vezivei Alad Shemaim. So what creates? What becomes a creating force and energy which comes and connects the heaven and earth? It's only the Ziva Hoide of the Shmei, which is Shmei is already the step away of the Hu. So only Hoide Vezivei Vehoide, Hashem's ray, Hashem's glory. Is what connects to Eretz Shemaim, heaven and earth, physical heaven and earth, figurative heaven and earth, heaven and earth, what heaven would be the El Nesayin, the supreme world, Oretz would be the lower worlds, until El Mazat Tachting, which ain't Tachting Matay Men, meaning to say the Chumri Yisabelam Hazah, which would be um, categorized as Oretz. So that 
is what ultimately is the life and energy force which ultimately creates heaven and earth. So with this Dalte Rebbe, so with this Dalte Rebbe is going to go on and it's going to say, this is why we use the terminology Chalkeinu, Chalokim, because when it comes to the Rei of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, there's an exact portion, there's exact measurement of Rei, which Dalte Rebbe says it's 613 strands of, of light, corresponding to the 613 limbs of man for creation who was ultimately created for man. And this corresponds, of course, primarily to the 613 mitzvahs and so on, which Al-Tarev is going to again enter into this message, which is going to fit into the prayer, Hashem and Chalkeinu, into these different verses, and ultimately the message and the, the, the takeaway from this to our Avedis Hashem, and this is such an, we, we said this is again, this chapter is extremely, extremely vital. Like every chapter in Tanya, every Geddes, but again, it becomes very centralistic in our service to our Creator, our mandate on, uh, in this world, Ali Adam, is as we are chosen to be that Shliach of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the message of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to make a difference. And again, we're indispensable to make a difference in the world, in, in, the, in, in, our, in our society, in our lot, in our society, and ultimately... And the impact and imprint which me as an individual has over the entire world, part of Hashem's plan, to make a Kodesh Baruch of this very world and about Adam the soul, for His greatness, for His presence, for Him Himself, for the core of a Baruch Hu. We look forward to continue. Hashem. Have a wonderful